sounds echo through the night streets. A steam engine type gurney driving through London at night at, as, as, as the scenery flew past it. Britain was, at this time, far behind on its system of traffic law. It was only a matter of time before it became a serious problem for society. At the time, gurneys were treated as luxury items held by competent, wealthy individuals. Once the mass production model was developed in this country, or an export model developed by the New World, gurneys would become widespread in Britain as well. When that happened, he wouldn't be able to push down this heart on the pedal while in fifth gear. That was what Howard thought while feeling ferocious speed in his body and the steering wheel. His beloved fiancée was looking down and let out a small complaint. He couldn't tell her he needed to drive slower at night. He had no choice but to push harder. I pushed the pedal harder. The chassis lurches from the SX acceleration. Their relative distance from the space in front of them instantly shrank, and the energy imparted by the accelerating mass made him lose track of his thoughts. This was bad. If he kept accelerating, he would crash. In a sense, dying with his beloved fiancée was the best Howard could hope for, but he couldn't let that happen for no reason. He had to marry her, build a happy family and make lots of children to fulfill her dreams. Her dreams? He absolutely could not cause a traffic accident until after all of that, and he didn't want to run over an innocent person either. Howard Phillips opened his lips while making an effort to not to let her realize the impatience in his heart, a slightly loud voice so as not to be drowned out by the engine. どうだよ、ハニー。かなりのスピードを出しているつもりだよ。これ以上というのは、いささか無理があるかな。うん。すごい。背中が座席に押し付けられるわ。加速って何もしなくても感じられるのね。でも、事故とか嫌だからね。も
was he only the way he was now because there was someone with him who could say such things? Howard had only been away from the new world for a few years, but he'd faced danger a number of times. And he was still perfectly healthy. Perhaps that was because surviving always meant being able to see people who could think of others without hesitation. That was why he was able to live life unharmed. To arrive at London, to meet his beloved Angelica. あ、well, he kind of does take advantage of her. He became flustered, almost losing his concentration on driving. This was a bad sign. Howard felt something brewing in Angelica's voice and became worried. He lowered the speed. Yes, they would be alright for now. He remembered the orphans he met on Baker Street. He was sure they were Mary's acquaintances. So then was what that said true? Miss Mary, a mistress? It was hard to imagine. Howard found that hard to accept even if the gentleman was virtually perfect. She didn't look like the kind of person who would want to be someone's mistress. She went to the Royal College after all. Howard was convinced of that. He could read people very well after trading for a few years. To him it was a sort of special skill. その話は庭家には信じがたいな。あのメアリ城のことは君の方が僕より詳しいだろ。そんな良太を信じるかい？信じなかったよ。でも見たの。見見た。でさあ、what？見たの。メアリが誰かと会ってるところ。相続者と学
It was a day when sunlight could be seen over the square mile, a day that felt somewhat relaxing. Beneath that white light, reminiscent of the light of the palace ruins, the people walking down the main street seemed to have bright expressions. A very slight, uh, a very slight uh, fissure between the grey clouds, different from the gaps at Hyde Park, something much smaller the light of the sun pouring down. One year had passing since the morning of December 25th, uh, 1904. Few still thought of it. The change in the sky met with wonder and applause, a white light in the sky acknowledged as a miracle by the Pope himself. By now it was a natural thing. In the past, many people would stop and look up at the sky whenever they could see a gap. But now, not many people stood still. Despite that, the people's expressions changed slightly. They couldn't help but feel calmer, the light from the sun beyond the grey clouds. But... Even as Mary looked up at the sunlight, even as she felt calmer, that morning her expression wouldn't turn into a smile. She thought about what happened a year ago. Charlie and Angie had made all sorts of noise and she pulled Charlie's hand. She asked herself if a whole year had passed, or only a year. While remembering the past and thinking about today and tomorrow, Mary walked. She changed directions from the Royal College towards Soho. The Bronte house, Donna guided Mary up to the bedroom. Mary had grown used to visiting them. It had been over two months since she first saw that black city. It was already December, almost Christmas time. Hey, it's really almost Christmas time. The city hardly changed, although Harrods underwent some remodeling. It was already December, almost the anniversary re 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 almost the anniversary of the miracle in the sky. Charlie had looked forward to spending that day with the, the, the two of them. Mary softly spoke to Donna, walking ahead of her down the long hallway. はい。私も同じ気持ちでいます。メアリ様。ええ。またあなたのお手料理を食べたいわ。とっても美味しかったから。ありがとうございます。They exchanged words a couple of times, then finally reached the bedroom. Mary quietly nodded to Donna, who opened the door for her and entered the bedroom. The sleeping Charlie. Surrounded by the flowers she'd gathered with Angie, a beautiful sleeping princess still lying down quietly, she was no different today. It felt too sad to let her sleep on a bare bed, that was what Angie said. They'd gone to Harrods and bought loads of flowers, marigolds and anemones. They had no intention of visiting a hospital bed, they just wanted Charlie to look nice even as she slept. Such a potpourri and more, so many of them. Real flowers would wilt so they'd got fake ones. The dolls Angie had bought for her at some point and they'd asked Donna to let them stay next to her. They were ones Charlie had wanted. But don't they have to provide her with uh, water and food or she would just die, wouldn't she? She looked a little skinnier than before. Mary had heard she was being given IV treatments at regular inter intervals, but was that enough to keep a human body alive? I just asked the question and here is my answer. Thank you. Mary felt uneasy, an indescribable sensation withered deep in her heart. Sorry. She made sure Donna had closed the door behind her and began quietly talking. There was no answer. There was no answer. She could barely hear her own breath if she cleared her ears. It was probably fine to describe it as tranquility. There was no reaction. 
not to Mary's desperate question, not to her eyes with tears. Sleeping Beauty by her p p p p Sleeping Beauty per her name kept sleeping. Her delicate eyelashes never twitched. Nothing. また来るわね。できればその前に起きていてほしいけど。そうでなくてもいいわ。必ず。私は生きて。またここへ来てみせるからね。必ず。